Greetings and welcome to another Discipleship Empowerment Word study as we've been journeying on this whole word of giving and gave and then sprinkling it together with the word father and love and friendship and joy and so many other words that are connected around what we've been talking about in this new year as we've been journeying through the book of John connecting with some of these words and trusting that some of these words that as we connect with them they'll connect with us and as we empower them they empower us amen so we're glad to be with you and i just saw that adrian popped up god bless you adrian over there in alberta at clearwater bible school may the lord give you much wisdom as you work in the library there bless you it's so good to see so many of you often in the mornings and we pray that god will bless you as you continue to serve him and whatever variety he has given to you and leads you in doing and so bless you we've been looking at the uh gospel of john chapter 15 where we saw how jesus has given himself to us as a vine and that we are to be grafted in and then how jesus has given himself to us as a friend and how we can build that relationship of friendship and love but there is something else i guess you could always say there's the negative side that shows up too so you have the positive side of life eternal grafting in and everything else that's so exciting that relationship with jesus christ but then he comes along with the flip side and to, and warns the disciple of something else. You know, I don't know if you know that if you were to look into synonyms a little bit, I'm not a very big person on understanding synonyms and antonyms and all those kinds of things. But the opposite of love is hate. And, you know, I think sometimes uh, that's the part we don't want to talk about. So... Today, as we look into John chapter 15, we're going to see now that things are going to switch over and from verses 18 through to the first part of chapter 16, we see this whole area of hate and rejection. And uh, this is what the world's going to give. Jesus gives a grafting in, a relationship, a love, and a friendship but the world what that's going to give is hatred and rejection of the believer and of jesus christ and we'll see and of the father so it's kind of the flip side and a side that we need to be warned about that's out there they're going to hate you now just a little bit of something hilarious uh just if there is can be kind of a funny moment here a lot of you don't know uh, my first wife's last name was hate but it wasn't in a necessarily spelt that the way we're using it today but it's h-a-i-g-h-t which probably the german way would be height but a lot of people pronounced it hate and she told me when she was going to arthur Bowden secondary school in saint thomas that her locker uh, was beside a Leslie Love. So you had two lockers together, and at that time they would put their names on there, so they would be Irene Hate and Leslie Love. And it was always comical that the, the hate and love were right beside each other every day. Well, I, I kind of think about that uh, often and think and smile to myself because, you know, I have experienced wherever there is love, there's somewhere work lurking around that wolf of hate you know that one that wants to hate us and doesn't even know why it wants to hate us it just hates us and and when you go to look at this word hate and define it it means that it's a poison that destroys from within can you imagine that it's a poison that destroys from within it's bitterness. It eats away the heart and the mind. These are the things that hate does. Again, it's the opposite to love. 
it's a an intense emotion uh of, you know that's connected to feelings and hostility so there is this intense emotion and i remember that even in my own home growing up there was intense hatred sometimes between even family members that could get very violent you know and so you can have the intensity of love but you can also have the intensity of hatred it seems like when there is a a, a wave of love the enemy tries to bring in a wave of hatred and this is what jesus wanted to warn the disciples it was almost like jesus is saying that while you're with me i'm i've been protecting you and keeping you covered from this this uh oh outpouring of hate that is going to come towards you and now he's going to explain to them why why is there this hatred and why does this hatred both come from the world and from the religious side of people? That they just get so angry and hatred and violent and, and willing to express themselves in such a way. I've even seen it off and on through watching some of the things that are said in Facebook. And I'm wondering, wow. That person has really got some deep bitterness and it, you can see that it's eating away inside them, in their heart, and their mind, and they're expressing it in and, and, and very, I guess you could sort of say, unchristian terms or unchristian ways. <laughs> and so when we look at this, Jesus is now going to take us to uh, verse number 18 or we are going to go in and study from verse 18 and notice what it says if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you so that's something that probably we don't want to wear on a t-shirt and say john 15 18 and have that verse written on our t-shirt but the under jesus was just point blankly saying after you have this fruit of the Father, the fruit of the Spirit, and they're walking in the Spirit, and you have this relationship with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The world is going to hate you. It's just not going to like you. And that, why? Because the prince of this world, Satan, hates you. And that's why we need to put on the full armor of God, to realize we're in a battle. You know, when you have wars between countries, a the, the lot of the premise of war is hatred. It's to, it's to get the people to hate. When you have uprising, it's hatred. When you, Sometimes even with demonstrations, when demonstrations, when the fire of the demonstration is, is got going, a lot of it begins to produce the fruit of hatred. And so we need to be careful that as we are disciples of Jesus Christ, that in these last days, you will also see that there is going to be a welling up, not only of grace, a welling up of love and of joy, but also there's going to be a welling up of hatred. Because the, the active counteraction to love is hatred. And that's why Jesus said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And how do we know? They hated Jesus so much, they, they crucified him. The religious people hated so much that they were planning over and over again how to kill him. And it's interesting when you go into other parts of scriptures, especially when it was talking about Lazarus. You know, Jesus had met with Lazarus and uh, after he was um, raised from the dead, and they were thinking not only did they want to kill Jesus, but they wanted to kill Lazarus too. Because they didn't want this walking testimony of, of life in front of them. And that's interesting, you know, how people can hate good so much. How, how people can get to the place that they're turned inside out with this hatred that even when good confronts them, they hate it. You ever notice that? And Jesus says that. If the world hates you, 
you know that it hated me before it hated you. And this word hate is used eight times in this little section of scripture. He goes on, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. We need to realize that the root of hatred is because we've come out of the world. That's what bugs them. What bugs people most is that when you don't go along with their ways, with their sin, with their ideas, and you rise up and do something different, you're going to begin to be hated. And that's why Jesus said to him, Disciples, I want to let you know, if you, you know, if you're in the world, actually, and living in the world, the world's going to love you. They're going to say, good going and everything like that. But if you're in Jesus and you're living Jesus, the world's going to hate you. And that's why sometimes I, I wonder by some of the things that we do. You know, it's like that, you know, we, the church works so hard to get loved by the world. And they, they get to the place that they water down standards and they water down all kinds of things so that they won't be hated, but they be loved. But in reality, if we're walking, as Jesus will tell us, in him and in his word and in his love, guess what? They're going to hate you. They're not going to like what you're doing. That's why, you know, sometimes you can go up and begin to talk to some people about Jesus Christ. And, and all of a sudden you just get hit with all kinds of explosive things. Because what it does, it just caught, it, it ignites a fire in the people of the world. And either it's going to draw them to Jesus Christ or it's going to cause them to hate Jesus Christ, to hate God. And if you're connected with either one of them, they're going to hate you. <laughs> wow. And this is what Jesus is trying to warn them. He's saying, you know, disciples, you need to learn that if you, if you want to stick with the world and walk with the world and bear fruit of the world, they're going to love you. Because you don't make them feel guilty. You don't make them feel that they're doing something wrong. And Jesus is going to say to them, you know what the problem is? You know where all this hate, the root of hate comes from? is sin. Because you become light that exposes the darkness in their life. And it exposes the sin. And they hate that. You understand what I'm saying? They hate that. People hate that when you take a stand for light. They hate, they hate it when you take a stand for Jesus Christ. Not everyone, but there's a lot out there that will. And Jesus is going to go on and, and he's going to tell them. Matter of fact, when they, when they hate you and kill you, they think they're going to be thinking that they've done God's will. Isn't that amazing? That they can twist it all the way around and use their hatred against the disciples of Christ as a way to prove their, that they're doing God's will. Well, let's continue on. Verse 20. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. So again, here's another precious promise. <laughs> we probably don't underline this one either. But he's saying, if they persecuted me, uh, I need to let you know, disciples, they're going to persecute you. You, you can bet on it. Just like the religious leaders went after Jesus, just as the Pharisees and Sadducees and others and the, and the rulers of the world went after Jesus and hated him to the place. You know, they hated him so much that there was a rejoicing at the Passover probably when they put him to death. They finally figured that, okay, we got him dead and now we can have peace. In reality... They have just bound themselves more to Satan and hatred and all the roots that come out of that. And so Jesus said, they're going to persecute you. I know this is not encouraging maybe to you today, but Jesus was trying to give a prophetic word of what's going on. 
And, you know, it's happening in a lot of countries around the world. We think, you know, it's not happening. I get emails and things from different places every day of persecution that's going on. You know, we're seeing it in the Facebook where people are being killed and martyred. And Jesus talks about this in the book of Revelation. And you know what? I believe it's coming to North America. Something we get to look forward to. But we need to be aware that it's out there. That not everyone's going to love what you do. And we've seen that as we worked with David's song and other booklets. People get all wound and bent out of shape and <laughs> write you all kinds of nasty things. You know, almost to the place of who made you God today? But Jesus warns us that's what's going to happen. If you're going to take a stand for Jesus and that salvation is through no other way than Jesus Christ and him only, people are going to hate that. They want to be able to have another way. They want to be able to have another truth. And they want to be able to have another life. But John 14, 6 says there is no other way. There is no other truth. And there is no other life. And because of that, they're going to persecute you and they're going to hate you. Well, that's not too encouraging this morning, but, you know, stick with me. It gets better as we get down through these scriptures because Jesus wanted them to know that this poison of hatred will destroy people. It will eat people from the inside out, this bitterness and things like this. And to realize that where there is hatred... It's the opposite than love. And so we go on here. He says, they persecute you. If they kept my words, they will keep yours also. So if they're on the same team, that if they keep the words of Jesus and you keep the words of Jesus, then you're going to have fellowship. Then there will be genuine love. They're on the same team. But he goes on. But a comparison now comes up again. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. So all these negative things they're going to do is because they hate the name of Jesus Christ. They hate it. That's why they swear and curse and use the name of Jesus Christ. They want to curse that name. They want to hate that name. Like why? Because that name brings conviction. That name brings light into darkness, and they hate it. And he goes on, and he says, and they hate it for my name's sake. You know, they're going to hate you because you love me, and you walk in my name. I'm a Christian, a disciple of Christ Jesus, and I'm not scared of saying that or telling others about that, but that's the truth. And if that causes hatred, persecution leading to death so be it but you're not going to change my mind about it you know because it's the love of christ why i do what we do every day why we reach out to the lost world each day because only love can change only love can cover up sin only love can set the captor free hatred does all the opposite hatred brings about bondage brings about uh, more captivity brings about death and not life that's what hatred does and so often you know you see even in husbands and wives how often there is hatred that becomes between a husband and a wife where it turns into violence that the people that they made vows one to another to love each other to care for each other until death do they part now they get into the place where you get all these marriages where there's physical you know a uh, hatred I mean, that's turned into physical punching and hitting and even killing their partners. The one that they had confessed love to. And so the enemy is always out there to try to turn the root of love into a root of hatred. And Jesus is warning the disciples about that. And he says, and the reason why this happens, this is the reason why they're in so much hatred is because they don't know me and they don't know the Father who sent me. If you go back to John chapter 14, Jesus is keep. remember we said over 45 times in this section, Jesus is teaching on the Father. And so the, th the reason is, 
is because they hate me, you and they hate me, he says, is because they do not know him who sent me. Remember John 3.16, for God so loved the world. It doesn't say for God so hated the world that he sent Jesus Christ. No, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Here it is again. Jesus said, I've been sent to pour forth the love of the Father. And, and what has happened, they have turned out to hate me. And the reason why they hate me, because they don't understand the Father. It, Jesus is saying, I'm standing here because the Father sent me. I'm in your presence and showing you love and healing and, and deliverance and everything else because I've been sent by the Father to accomplish this. This is what he has commanded. This is what he has asked me to do. And so Jesus was here on earth to fulfill the will of the Father. And what was the will of the Father was to love us to the place of repentance so that we could have forgiveness of sin. Because why? Well, look what it goes on here. Verse 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, then they would have no sin. See, he said, if I wouldn't have come, they wouldn't have known about sin. They would have kept their legalistic law and all that kind of stuff and tried to do all their sacrifices to, to get rid of their sin. But Jesus said, you know, what's really bugging them is that I come, and because I've come, they now know that there is sin. They would have not known sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. This is what people get so upset about. And you may get upset, or people that are listening in for the first time, you may get upset when we're talking about this subject of hate, is because Jesus came to love you, to love you, to love you. And if there is a root in you that, that when I say that word love to you, that instead of receiving it and you well up with hatred, then there's a problem. Then there's bondage. There's a place that we need to pray for deliverance. For he goes on. For if they had not come and had and spoken to them, they would not have known sin. But now they are they have no excuse for sins. That's the interesting thing, that when we go and, and die our physical death on earth and we stand for the before God on the judgment seat, before God, do you know what? We're not going to have any excuses because we're going to know them that there was another way, but we chose not to walk it. We chose not to live it. A lot of people have chosen that way, you know, a lot of people, and, and you don't underestimate that people don't know. People know. You walk up to anybody and just ask them, whether they're a believer or a non-believer or whether they're a, of a cult or another religion, just ask them this simple question. Do you know where you're sinning? Do you know almost everybody knows where they're making mistakes? Because the inside them, built inside them, God has made an awareness of who he is. And this is the way to go. And they've chosen to go another way. And Jesus is saying, you know what? They're going to hate me even more because I've come to reveal to them through the light and power of the Holy Spirit where the sin is in their lives. And if we're going to have eternal life, we must confess that sin. But we hate that. We hate to do something that goes against our will. That's why we need to die to our will and live for Jesus Christ. He goes on in verse 23 and he says, He who hates me hates me, hates my father also. So, isn't it interesting? We just talked about that, where we've tried to divide the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit all up in the three boxes. And, and for identity purpose, the Lord does that. But here in John chapter 14 and 15, Jesus is bringing it all back together and saying, you know what? I'm going to tell you a very simple truth, disciples. When they hate me, they've hated my Father. There is no separating. You can't say, well, I love God. And I hate Jesus. It doesn't work. 
it doesn't work. There's too many people walking around saying, oh, I have a love for God. And I'll, then I'll say to them, well, what about Jesus Christ? Well, I don't really understand him. I don't really like him. I don't really want to go that way. Why? Because he reveals sin. He's a revelation of sin. He, he gave us a revelation of sin. And we have the choice to either love the world or to love Jesus Christ. We have a choice to love Jesus Christ and hate the world. Or we can choose to hate Jesus Christ and love the world. That's what Jesus is talking about here. And he says in verse 23, He who hates me hates my father also. So there is a direct connection back to the Father. We've had this going on day after day where, where the Gospel of John is trying to say you can't break these two apart. They're connected. If you love, if you say you love the Father, then you have to love me. And if you love me, you're already loving the Father. He goes on in verse 24. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and the Father. So Jesus is just referring back to the disciples and they, he knows exactly how many times that Jesus had to walk through the crowd. How many times that they were getting ready to stone Jesus. How many times they wanted to kill him even before they nailed him to the cross. And he's saying here, you know, that because of their sins and, and the reason why they're so upset because they've seen, they've seen the works of the Father in me. And they even hate that. They hate that I am who I am. They hate that. They hate that. And that's the thing that causes and going to cause great persecution in the last days. Because as we stand up and proclaim and testify, and he's going to talk about that in chapter 16, and testify, testify about the love of the Father, they're going to hate that. And the more you talk about it, and the more you stand for it, you know what? The more they're not going to like you. And that's what he's saying. They hated both me and my father. Verse 25. But this happened, that the word might be fulfilled, that is written in the law. They hated me without cause. The interesting thing that Jesus brings us all down, all this hatred, all this animosity, all this bitterness towards Jesus is a prophetic word that's given to us in several places in Psalms. Psalm 35, 19, and then also we're going to look at for a moment here, Psalms 109, verses 3 and 5. And we're going to see it's prophetically told, told that they hated Jesus without a cause. They Remember when, when, when Herod said, I can find no fault in him. The king says, I find no fault in him. I don't know what it is with you guys, you know. And then he says, I, I, you know, every Passover I release someone, you know. Why don't I just release Jesus? And they said, no, I, we don't want Jesus. Give us Barabbas. Barabbas was a thief and everything else. And they'd rather have that than the light of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is telling the disciples, this is what's going to take place. And so when you go over in Psalms, 109 verses 3 to 5 you know we're given this prophetic word it says here they have also surrounded me with words of hatred they've surrounded me with words of hatred remember all those times when jesus was in teaching that they surrounded them they looked for ways to kill them they looked for ways to to try to trick them up the scholars the 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 lawyers the pharisees the sadducees the religious people they surrounded me, he said, with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. They kept opposing me without a cause. There was no just reason because justice would have said there's no cause for your condemnation. There is no cause for your charge. And this is what Herod said. There is no cause. I'm a judge, and I looked at your case. There is no cause. 
and he goes on in return for my love notice that in return for my love they are my accusers I've come to love them the father has sent me to love them and what have they done they have turned to become my accusers but I give myself to prayer isn't it interesting that in this prophetic word that that it's going forth that Jesus gives himself to prayer and so here we know that he went to the garden we went often all night prayers I think to, to be able to to counteract this hatred he needed to spend very close time with the father in love in connection because every day he was being confronted by hatred and he says but I give myself to prayer and I think that's the only way we're going to be able to succeed over the hatred of this world that is going to come against us that is going to try to persecute us that is going to try to say all manner of things against us falsely the only way we're going to be able to overcome it is in prayer and he goes on in verse 5 a psalm of 109 thus they have rewarded me evil for good and he goes on and they hated the end hatred for my love here it is it's a prophetic word and they have hatred for my love and that's what's coming out of verse 25 when jesus says to the disciples let me tell you what's going to happen here they hate me they hate me with a passion they hate everything i stand for and if you're going to be a follower of christ they're going to hate everything you stand for also and it's interesting and we're, i'm just going to read it I, we'll pick it up again tomorrow because our time is short here. So we get this idea of hatred, the opposite of love coming forth, telling us because they hated him. And I think they hated Jesus, just like he said, because they didn't know the Father. we got to know that the Father loved us, that he sent his only Son to die for us. That's love. No greater love. We talked about that yesterday. No greater love can one give than to lay down his life for another jesus demonstrated the greatest of all love no other cult no other religion no other religious leader at all demonstrated love by saying i'll die for you there's none other none other only jesus who was innocent there was no cause. No judge could find anything against him. And still they crucified him. Why? Because they hated him. They hated what they stood for. They hated that he showed light upon them that revealed their sin. That's what they hated. But that doesn't leave us hopeless. And I want to just open up this verse because verse 26 continues on. It said, not only are they going to hate you, but they're going to reject you. But I've got something special for you, disciples. And what's that? Verse 26. But when the helper comes, here we again. Remember we were talking about the helper in chapter 14, verse 25. Verse 25 says, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you verse 26 but the helper the holy spirit will come whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that i have preached to you peace i leave you then now again down in verse 26 of chapter 15 but when the helper comes but when the helper comes you know, how are you going to overcome this persecution, this hatred, all this animosity? It's but when the Helper comes. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, He is going to speak truth. The world is going to speak lies. They're going to condemn you with lies. But the Holy Spirit is going to speak truth. 
and say to each one of us, you're a child of God. You're joint heirs with me. I'm in love with you, and I know you're in love with me. When the Spirit of truth, who proceeds, where? From the Father, He will testify of me. So don't panic, disciples, when all this hatred and persecution comes. Don't worry about what you're going to speak or what you're going to say, because when the Helper comes, He will empower you with spirit and truth. And he comes on behalf of the Father, and he is going to give testimony of Jesus Christ. That's where it all comes to. That's where the greatest victory ends up. The greatest victory is that when all this hatred and persecution, animosity, and strife all comes against you, let me remind you that at that moment, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will rise up. The Helper will help you through. And He will bear testimony of the Father, of the Son, and of Himself. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for this opportunity to even know as we're looking at such a negative word to realize in the midst of this negativity you use the word but. The comparison, what you're saying, Lord, when all this comes against us, but I will send the helper. And he is going to be a spirit of truth. He is going to be the one that stands up in the court case. And I thank you, Lord, that in the midst of the court case, he will stand up and speak truth. And nobody will be able to deny that truth. Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is speaking on behalf of us this day and is in us and flowing through us and empowering us. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us during these times of hatred and persecution that we might raise above, above what the world is trying to do and become children of the kingdom of heaven. And we give you thanks now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hey, hopefully that kind of shook us up again this morning to think about what's going on around about us and to realize we can overcome because of the helper. Amen. We love you. Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye for now.